Cheese pull. I love cheese pull. Hey guys, today we are in the very foggy town of Orangeville, Ontario, Canada, because one of our amazing super fans all the way from San Diego by the name of Vincent uh, sent me a big box of stuff and uh, asked me to do basically three videos. <laughs> and so today we're gonna do one of those videos, which is uh, eat at a place called Philadelphia Kitchen here in Orangeville and apparently they make great Philly cheese steaks. Then he wanted me to go to Mr. Sub to try a specific sub and he actually said here in Orangeville. So he really wants me to be here in Orangeville and he lives in San Diego. I figured we'd stay here the night and uh, find a good place to stealth camp somewhere. A lot of good places in this town. Uh, a lot of easy places to, to park and, and stealth camp for the night. And also found a really cool breakfast place in town that I want to try some of their food as well. So we're going to be uh, giving you a really cool video, three different restaurants plus a stealth camp. So stay tuned. But right now, let's go into Philadelphia Kitchen and order some of their amazing food. Let's go. Hello. How are you? All right, how are you doing? Good. A friend of mine told me to come here and eat some of your food. Okay. <laughs> he said, uh, okay, so uh, I'd love to try a Philly poutine. Like looking this. for a steak, like a cheese steak. Pizza. My top one is Canadian buffalo. Okay. Okay. Spicy. Okay. 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 So do you think the Canadian is the most ordered thing here? One of the top. Okay. Are you going to do a Canadian? Yes, please. Onions are okay? Of course. All right, is it for here? Uh, to go, please. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Oh, for sure, thanks. Right, thank you. Have a great day, guys. All right, let's eat Philadelphia Kitchen. Woohoo, ladies and gentlemen, we're back in the car. Did you see that? As, it, as I got in, it just did a little tip. And if that flips over, it's over. And uh, this meal came to a eight, a whopping 18 and 25 cents, 18 dollars and 25 cents. Let's put this over here for a second. Let's get out this trusty steering wheel tray. It's about one degree outside. Thanks Vincent. Vincent sends me at least one letter a year asking me to do stuff. And there's two other things on the, on the uh, in his letter that he wants me to do, but I'm not gonna tell you guys, it's a secret. I'm gonna keep you guys hanging for a little bit. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. Are you guys ready? You guys can see it before me. Here we go. Philly poutine. Oh, did you see the steam coming off that? Woo! Uh-oh. I'm not sure if that's a Philly poutine or not. Hmm. I think I asked for Philly poutine. It looks like a regular poutine. Hmm. Because I don't see any meat on there. You would think a Philly poutine would be meat. That's why I ordered it. Oh well. Okay. Let's open this up. Here we go. Philly cheese steak. One of the big mistakes I made when I was in Philadelphia doing those three fabulous cheese steaks. I kept calling them Philly cheese. Can I get a Philly cheese steak? They know what I'm or they know I'm in Philly. <laughs> So a cheesesteak's a cheesesteak. That's all you need to order. Just in case you guys needed a heads up, if you ever go to Philadelphia, just ask for the cheesesteak. And I think there's a big argument as to should you or should you not put um, cheese whiz on it or provolone and uh, it's, it's, it's mixed emotions. All right guys, check out this awesome, huge lunch. Over here we've got our poutine, which like I said, I think it should have been a Philly poutine. But over here, we have our cheesesteak on that wicked looking bun or baguette. I'm not sure what you'd want to call that. You can see the onion, all that chopped steak. And that was another thing. I kept calling it ground beef because it looked like ground beef, but it's chopped up steak. So don't make that mistake either or, or people will jump down your throat. Speaking of going down my throat, 
Let's eat. You know what I'm going to do real quick? Is I'm going to go in there and ask him if that's the Philly poutine or not, just to make sure we didn't get screwed over. I'll be right back. All right. Problem solved. She said, because they don't use cheese curds, and I could see that right away, and then I'm sure, pretty sure every Canadian that looked at that poutine knew right away there was no cheese curds on that poutine. So when they, I guess, used to call it a poutine, people were like, well, there's no cheese curds on it, so you can't call it a poutine. So they call it a Philly, I guess because of the restaurant, Philly poutine. But in my mind, when somebody's gonna, when I buy a Philly poutine, I'm thinking that there's gonna be Philly stuff on it. You know, chopped steak and onion and stuff like that. That was where I was, that's what I was thinking it should be. So let me know in the comments below if you agree. And I get, I get it because they're, they're calling it, like their poutine is being named after their restaurant. I get it, I understand. Anyway, let's go in. So yeah, you can see right away that there's no cheese curds on there. It's just mozzarella. So let's just do a quick bite of that. Cheese pull. I love cheese pull. A lot of you guys let me know that you do the exact same thing when you're with friends and family or your kids love to say cheese pull whenever you get a cheese pull. Why not? Oh, that's nice. Mmm. Philadelphia Kitchen. Very nice gravy. That tastes like a nice beef based gravy on this. Most chicken places will do obviously chicken gravy, but uh, places like this, uh, they seem to always do beef based gravy and that tastes fantastic. Mmm. Authentic Philly cheesesteaks. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. That's nice. The fries are nicely done. Mozzarella cheese, whatever. And uh, that gravy is fantastic. And there's a nice, perfect amount of salt on there. Not too salty. Too much salt will kill it right away. And here we go. I haven't had a cheese steak in years, ever since I went to Philly. So let's do it. Let's see how authentic it is. I would say uh, this is probably definitely smaller than the the three different ones i tried in philadelphia but it looks great the bun is fantastic it's gonna be nice and crunchy i can just tell i want to bite this way here we go mm. very nice there's mushrooms in there green peppers that is a fantastic cheesesteak. Wow. Well done, Philadelphia Kitchen. Vincent, thank you. I don't live in Orangeville, so I would never know that that place existed. But thanks to people like Vincent and you for letting me know about these little mom and pop shops. I think they've been on TV too. Uh, you should eat here. And there was a, a little sandwich sign over there saying as seen on TV or something. So at the moment, I'm loving every single bite. <laughs> a very fresh bun. You can see the cheese in there now. Mmm. Mmm. Beautiful. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get a cheese pulled off that. But yeah, look at that. The beard's getting longer. Got to wipe my face more. Wow. This is a good meal. Definitely gonna have to come back and do other things on the menu. They got veal. That was a, that's a big menu board. And they have two cooks going, plus the woman at the front there. So their Philly poutine is okay, 
because I again I wouldn't uh, even put the word poutine in there. We call it Dutch <laughs> fries, gravy, and cheese. And uh, just get away from the word poutine altogether. Just my opinion, Vincent, man. I hope someday you can come up from uh, San Diego and try out the Philly uh, Philadelphia kitchen. I'm guessing you saw somebody on YouTube eat here and you thought I should eat here too. And I'm glad you did. Lots of cheese. Oh, it's going. It's going down. It's going down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> After this, we're going to go for a walk. I'm going to try and walk 10,000 steps today. It's not too cold. I think it's going to take about 10,000 steps to work off this food. And when we go for a walk, we'll show you around the town. It's pretty foggy. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get too many drone shots in for you. Two more bites. That roll is amazing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm loving this Philly cheesesteak so much. I'm going to have to give this last bite a 1 o'clock in the morning shout-out bite to every single one of you men and women out there who love to watch my videos at 1 o'clock in the morning. We don't know why you do, but you do. This last Philly bite is just for you. Cheers. Mm. Oh, yeah. Just going to park here at the... Uh, a and W, and uh, we'll start going for a walk. We will uh, set our watch. We'll hit outdoor walk, and uh, three, two, one. Let's start walking. Got Tim Hortons, Hakeem Optical, Angels Diner. I definitely want to do a, a review there one time. There's a there's one here. There's one in, I think. Uh, Brantford, definitely in Brantford, and possibly one in Georgetown. So I know there's three of them. There might be more. They're very good. They seem like a family-owned restaurant, but it's almost like a chain, too. a and is down there. We just walked up this hill, and that building's pretty nice looking. Gray stones. A lot of old-looking houses. Pretty-looking houses. And this is definitely the downtown area. This is Broadway going this way. Got a few statues. I think this is the second one that I've seen. This is a boxer. The boxer. The tribute to local boxing champions. Nice. I saw a chocolate store up. <laughs> Not too far. Here's another one. Pretty good workmanship right there. Very nice. Uh, nothing, no plaque. Huh. Very good word working. Even these nice little inlays. Well, there's a map of Orangeville with some graffiti on it. Graffiti, don't pay attention. We are here. So this is the downtown area. Uh, the place we just ate at was around here, maybe here. And we parked around here. And there's a lion. Probably for the Lions Club. Yeah. Lions International. Very well done. There's another nice building. There is a old picture of what the downtown looked like in 1921. Let's see if we can zoom in on it. There you go, 1921, Orangeville. And then over here is, uh, what's that say, 1963. Cool. There's the chocolate shop. It's closed. That's a good thing for me. Let's go take a peek. 
What kind of goodies did we miss out on? Chocolate covered something. Oh, there's a chocolate Santa sleigh, chocolate Santa, but it's on sale now. Oh, chocolate monkey or something. There's their town clock right there. There's another one on a building close by. Right here is the old public library. It looks like they are renovating. Got the dumpster out front, trucks, trucks parked around the side. It's all fenced off. So they're gonna hopefully re-renovate it, make it all look spanking new. Looks like you can normally walk up the center of the street, but it's closed for the season. I guess they don't have the uh, manpower to keep, keep, keep it clear of snow. The old theater. Very cool, I love old theaters. Here is the old firehouse, 1891. And they even have maintained the door where the truck would come out. Look at that. Beautiful building, very cool. Kilometer five, pace, 10 minutes, 57 seconds. Nice, two kilometers to go. It should be around 10,000. I'm now at uh, just over six kilometers and uh, there's a Walmart right here. So it's possible if I see any other campers, which I doubt because it's January, not too many people camping. Uh, but if there's anybody staying here tonight, I think I'll join them, park near them. It's always nice to park in a group. But uh, yeah, I walked all around the town and I'm at about 9,000 steps so far. I'm almost back to my car and there's uh, all these little stores like that Emporium back there and that bookstore that is that just look really cool and then there's this music store and they've got animal and a Beatles drum set looking thing and there's Kermit Miss Piggy very funny and here's like a framing shop <laughs> but look at that little camper that is cool man love it Annie. Well, made it back to A&W. I'll show you how many kilometers I walked and how many steps. So we did 10,700 steps, uh, almost nine kilometers. And right now I have uh, burned 655 calories. Yep, 655. Sweet. Let's go eat. made it over to Mr. Sub and uh, it's around four o'clock in the afternoon and we are going to do this substantial value sub and you can do tuna or seafood. Uh, let's do seafood and let's do large. Are you guys ready? Let's go. Stop recording. Shut down. Nice. Hello. Hello. Can I do your seafood large, please? It smells like cookies in here. Yeah. <laughs> sure, thanks. Oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna go for this herb, herb bun. I get the fresh stuff. <laughs> Of course, it's always fresh. Do you want to add any toppings? Yeah, I guess um, tomatoes and lettuce would be great. Is it okay for lettuce? Yeah, that's good, thanks. I think that's it, thank you. Oh, salt and pepper. 
perfect. I'm going to do a chocolate milk, please. We're here to go. Uh, to go. Any brownie cookie chips? Uh, I'll do a chocolate chip cookie, please. This one right there. That's the, look at that, way more chocolate. Great, thank you. You too. Let's eat. I don't think we need our light yet, so it looks fine in the video there. Put that over there. Ooh. She's quick on the draw, eh? I'm like, ooh, I get the fresh stuff. We always serve fresh stuff, sir. <laughs> I know, but I get the stuff that was just made. That's fresher than the fresh stuff she had in there before I got there, which was only about this much left in the in the thing. She didn't have enough, which is great. So yeah, got the uh, tray already set up here. I got my, this is a messy sub, all that mayo and stuff. And of course I got a chocolate milk. It makes people comment in the comment section below. You got chocolate milk? Ew. <laughs> I'm like, look at all the drinks I could pick from. Which makes people comment more? Chocolate milk. Thanks for commenting. All right, let's go in for our close up. All right, guys, going in for the extreme close up of our dinner here in Orangeville. Over here, we got our fresh chocolate milk. And there is our 12 inch sub. And I believe that is called the Greek style bun. And then over here we got our chocolate chip cookies. See, that's why I would pick that one over that one because all of them look like that. That was the only one that looked like that and that's why I chose that one. She laughed when I said, I want that one. Anyway, so let's just open this up. There we go. There's all that fresh seafood caught yesterday or caught today, served up today. I don't think so, but it's going to taste great. Uh, I, I used to get this sub many years ago, but since Vincent never seen me eat one, I'm glad Vincent asked me to do it again. Scratch it, sniff it, the rest is mine. Mmm. Nice fresh bun. That's, that's my favorite. That's my go-to bun. Dinner roll, baguette, whatever. Bread. It's my favorite bread here at Mr. Sub. Pretty cool plaza they got here. You got a Wild Wings, the Mr. Sub, Papa John's, Nella's Jerk. If you chip a tooth at one of these places, you can go to the dentistry. And then you can go to the butcher shop at Dave's there and then grab a drink at uh, Daisy Mart. <laughs> it's a great little plaza. The seafood tastes great. And I think they use that same like fake crab stuff that you can buy, uh, those fake crab legs that you can buy at the supermarket or whatever. It has that same flavor to it. So it's not really crab, but my whole life I've always eaten at Mr. Sub. It's a Canadian institution. I think an American owns it now. I'm not 100% sure if anybody wants to leave, leaves a comment in the comment section below. And I believe that the owner or the guy who invented or started this whole Mr. Sub, he used to be called Mr. Submarine and then they changed it to Mr. Sub. Everybody likes to shorten words. But I think he was murdered in Florida. That was one of the stories I heard. I'm not sure if it was just a random mugging or robbery or whatever and he got shot or, what, or somebody wanted to kill him. I don't know. Maybe he was a bad Canadian. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure who owns it now. But uh, Mr. Sub, you can find them right across Canada. Um, we also have um, Subway. Of course, Subway's huge. But Mr. Sub's our Canadian version. And I think Mr. Sub might be even older. Again, leave a comment in the comment section below. Which is older, Mr. Sub or Subway? I think Mr. Sub is. But after doing that 10,000 step walk, this is hitting the spot. Mm. All right, so good. If you've eaten that Mr. Sub, let us know what's your favorite sub and what's your favorite bread. I think this is the Greek. My favorite bread. Last bite of that amazing sub. Uh, I'll give that a sub a uh, go out and get it now. It was a very good sub, especially on that bun. I'm going to save the other half for tomorrow's dinner. But we're definitely going to eat these cookies.
Once again, if you had a choice, which one would you pick? Yes, I know, you would pick that one. Oh yeah, love baked, fresh baked cookies. I'm pretty sure they cook them every day. They bring the dough in from the factory, but at least they cook them in the store. And the store smelled like cookies. Made me want to buy it. And that's a pretty good chocolate chip cookie. Two cookies were $1.79. I guess that's okay. I remember when you could buy a whole box of cookies for $1.79. <laughs> Apparently, if you're trying to sell your house, bake some chocolate chip cookies when you have an open house. Or bread. That makes people want to buy. Well, let's eat this up and... Uh, Drive around town, try to find a really cool spot to stealth camp. Mmm. I'm saving that cookie for later. Well, I drove from one end of Orangeville to the other. Uh, we could stay at the Walmart, but again, there's no other person or no other people camping there, of course, because it's January. Uh, but I found two McDonald's that have that are open 24 hours, and so those are, those are pretty good spots. To stealth camp at so we're going to uh, get into that parking lot find a inconspicuous spot set up a stealth camper and at seven o'clock the Leafs are playing can't remember who they're playing hey Siri who are the Leafs playing tonight the Maple Leafs play the Red Wings the Red PM. Wings easy game easy game <laughs> yeah let's get this all set up and uh, We'll watch the game. Can't wait. Go Leafs, go. Yeah, big McDonald's. Very large. Ooh, waffle fries are back. Hmm. It is possible if I get kicked out, then maybe we can go to the Shoppers Drug Mart or again, Walmart's just over here somewhere. Or behind me, maybe. Spicy nuggets. I found the perfect parking spot right by this tree and uh, my car is facing away from the light so no light will be coming in this way fantastic let's get in here i might have to use the heater for a bit because it's going to be just cold enough just cold enough to give me the chills we've got our jackery down there we'll get all of our cables out so charge our batteries up for tomorrow oh that's where you're i was wondering where you went you're usually supposed to be there. Got my jacket for later. All window coverings are up and I am stealthed out. And uh, so I'm going to get my stuff all set up and then we might run inside to McDonald's and grab those spicy nuggets and waffle fries, give them a shot and uh, then I'll watch the game and then go to bed. Right now I gotta get some work done. <laughs> Well, the Leafs lost badly to Detroit, uh, four to three. So it's now time to grab some grub from McDonald's. Let's go. Ooh, look at all the snow. What has happened? Lots of snow. Holy schmoly. Time to get some spicy nuggets and waffle fries. Oh, I'm freezing. Oh, it's so cold. How are you? Good, how are you? All right, can I get uh, spicy nuggets and waffle fries, please? Sure, what size of nuggets would you like? Uh, uh, how... 6, 10, or 20? Let's do six. Okay. Do you want to try the ghost pepper or the ranch sauce with that? Let's go ghost pepper. Heck yeah. Spicy and spicy. I love it. I'm here for it. <laughs> you said a waffle fry, right? Uh, yes. Okay. 1128. Thank you. 
It's gonna be a couple of minutes because I'm gonna drop fresh waffle fries for you, okay? Lots of balloons. Thank you. Oh, nice. Ooh, the waffle fries. Oh, there's one bonus fry. Mmm. We're sitting here in the car watching the game. Watching the Leafs lose. It's not fun. They tried hard. But that didn't help. Okay. So. We have ghost pepper sauce. Check that out. We have the spicy chicken nuggets. And the awesome waffle fries. When you order these late at night. They haven't made them yet. So they are super fresh. Right out of the vat. And they are super tasty. Oh yeah, baby. Woo! Let's try one without the ghost pepper sauce. Oh! Wow! It took a second. And all of a sudden, just grabbed, stung my tongue like a bee. Oh, ho. way to go, McDonald's. Let's see what happens. Oh, my goodness. We're in trouble. Look how orange that is. That is going to be a problem, maybe. So these are spicy without any sauce whatsoever. I think you would scare a few children if you gave them this. They would just, I hate McDonald's. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Oh, nice and spicy, tangy. Oh boy. Oh boy. McDonald's. My goodness. Holy cow. And I think that is the most spiciest thing I've ever eaten at McDonald's. It's the spicy nuggets and ghost pepper sauce. Wow. Do I leave a drink back here? Yeah, good. Woo. Unbelievable. Wow. I never thought McDonald's would go that spicy. Incredible. That sauce is crazy spicy. Both of them together are definitely a combination that you need to avoid if you don't like crazy hot food. This just needs ketchup. And that's pretty much the only thing you need to eat with a waffle fry. Let us know in the comments below what you prefer with your waffle fries. I'm thinking a nice gravy my tongue is still burning and the inside of my mouth pretty much everything is just burning Woo! oh that's that's hot stove hot Woo! so you hear my nose and this is spicy hot again when you mix these two things together incredible Wow, McDonald's. I never thought you would go that spicy. Ghost pepper sauce. Uh, wow. It's hot. It's really hot. Ooh. Ooh. Killer hot. I, like I've eaten ghost peppers by themselves, and this is definitely not as close as that. But wow. I know people that definitely couldn't eat that. As my glasses are fogged up, the perfect meal snack after a game lost to the Detroit. Oh, it's still hot. Definitely a bonus fry right there. That's not supposed to be in there. Oh, the heat, the heat 
of the uh, waffle fries whoo, whoo, is compounding oh, the spiciness of those nuggets and that sauce. Oh, my God. My tongue is on fire. Whew. Come on, man. Persevere. Wow. All the spicy things I've done at McDonald's, I didn't think that it'd go that hot. And they did. Oh, my goodness. And your waffle fries, McDonald's, are definitely awesome. Go out, give it a try. I'm going to pulse these off. And then I'm going to go to bed. After I blow my nose, plug all my gear in. Woo! I didn't think I was going to be eating anything this spicy today. Woo! I'm going to eat the rest of this stuff up. Hit the hay. And we'll see you in the morning. And uh, i got something special for you guys in the morning. So stay tuned. January, uh, Friday the 13th, and uh, hopefully nothing goes wrong today. It is minus 2.1. So, had a great sleep. The sleeping bag's amazing. Um, so, yeah, the only thing that woke me up last night was uh, the garbage trucks at 4.30 in the morning. And I was totally waiting, excuse me, oh, totally waiting for uh, plows to come through. And, I, and vehicles did come through, but I didn't hear a blade scraping along the ground. So I don't know what's up with that. But uh, yeah, it doesn't look like plows came. And if they did, they just did like maybe the drive through or something. But uh, that's what it looks like right now out there. So it snowed a little bit, not too much. Uh, first things first, I'm going to have to start this vehicle and get her warm. And then we'll head out, grab our breakfast. Very cold. Very cold. My auto start doesn't work anymore. Twenty-seven degrees sounds good. <laughs> One of the things we talked about in the past is uh, my face would get cold and people said use a balaclava. And uh, so I don't like balaclavas because then that leaves the eye parts open. So uh, what I've been doing is just turning my hat around so there's no logo on the front and then pulling my hat down to around there. And then I put my hoodie over and then I'm just basically my mouth and then my uh, sleeping bag covers my neck. Logo back in front, glasses on. Yeah, this is the sleeping bag that comes right down to a special hole that you can breathe out of it because you don't want to breathe inside a sleeping bag because it just creates moisture inside. So that's not good. Up to one degree so far. Putting those boots on is the worst, man. I have a vent down here. You can kind of put your boot into the vent and uh, get it warmer inside so your feet don't start off the day cold. goodness it is minus 14 degrees out there it is windy and uh, last night it was minus 8 when I checked so that's the coldest night this year I know other people have done like minus 38 but 
Uh, I don't think it's going to get to minus 38 here in Ontario this year. But uh, if I can get the chance, I'll do it just for you. Oh boy, it's frozen. Door is frozen shut. There we go. <laughs> okay, one more time. There you go, buddy. There you go. Into the deep snow. It's not that deep. Oh, jeez. Couldn't get out for a bit. Hmm. Gonna have to do some scraping. So I got some froze along the top there. That's melting nicely. We'll have to scrape too much of that. Looks like it came from the other way, eh? fingers warm those fingers yeah the green apple and they have something on their uh, menu called eggs benedict with beef steak six ounce let's go three if you want but uh, green apple cafe I'm gonna do the two um, steak Benedict yes please got our nice hot coffee hopefully he refills that multiple times let's go 18% today I like cream when I'm out and about that out over here we have our super crispy home fries all peppered up oh there's the steak hollandaise sauce soft boiled eggs inside hopefully a toasted english muffin on the bottom can't tell from here steak knife very important home fry Let's see if that steak is medium Medium rare. <laughs> Let's check and see if the yolk is done. Cut. Yep. Nice and gooey. I prefer the more gooey, but that's all right. This one too. Not bad. Not bad. That's like when it runs all over everything. The steak is very tender. Wow. Dude. Kidding? 
That is really good. I don't think I could do three of them. What a great combination. I've never had this before. Once again, I got the clean plate award. Nice. Practice was great. Have a good day. Frozen rusty. Well, there you go, guys. My little food tour of Orangeville. There's a ton of restaurants here. I definitely want to come back. Uh, I want to sincerely thank Vincent for asking me to come out here and uh, doing uh, the two places that he asked me to review and uh, everything's pretty much a go out and get it now. Uh, this was definitely a go out and get it now plus. Um, the coffee was half decent and uh, the steak was cooked exactly the way I wanted it. There's a guy backing up and it looks like he's going to hit a car. Oh, he didn't hit the car, he hit the snowbank. Wow, that was close. He's like big truck and he's in a tight spot. Yikes. Anyway, back to us. Squirrel. And once again, thanks Vincent. And thank you guys for watching every single one of my videos, leaving those amazing comments, hitting those thumbs up. You guys are awesome. Don't forget to share. Uh, and of course, all my channel members uh, for your monthly support. You guys are amazing. And my supporters over on Patreon. You guys rock. If you enjoyed this video and you want to show your support for me doing these videos just for you, hit it with a thumbs up. Ding, 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 ding. Ding. But if you're still hungry for more, check out that playlist I put down over there. We'll see you over there. Bring your hunger.